this discussion which we are going to have will also deal with uh, safe transportation and disposal. It is becoming a very big issue. I mean industries are looking for a solution and let me tell you one thing that the whole concept of conventional geotechnical engineering is uh, changing or it has changed. So, very soon you will realize that uh, I will be creating a lot of uh, situations where you will realize that uh, this relationship between patient and the doctors is very much applicable to this and what you are talking about material characterization, uh, my logic is that this is just like your pathological examination. So, this is how I treat that. So, we will talk about transportation and disposal which most of the industries are facing as a big challenge in today's world and development of suitable strategy for proper utilization of the waste. And this is where uh, you know our group has also coined this concept of uh, man made soils. So, the issue is quite big I hope you are realizing is transportation, disposal, handling to utilization and converting into in some value added product uh, which we call as valorization, we will talk about that. So, apart from a discussion on these issues, this course also highlights the importance and relevance of revising the basic concepts of geotechnical engineering. Uh, this course is basically meant for PG students, A lot of students undergraduates also want to do this course, but you know what is the meaning of the word blasphemy, you must have come across, yes. So, what is blasphemy? Exactly. So, this is what I am going to do here now. <laughs> so, this is what please remember, you know, uh, apart from a discussion on these issues, this course highlights the importance and relevance of revising the basic concepts. It is in a very humble and polite way of writing that this is what we are going to do. We are going to bulldoze the concepts of conventional geomechanics. Why? they have become obsolete. You cannot use them for solving the real life problems as simple as that. So, when you realize that the code of conduct is not helping you in solving a problem, what would be your initiative? What will be doing? Either change yourself or change the bible which was written by whom and when and why it is not clear. You understand? That is the reason that why this course is meant strictly for PG students, because you already have the background of basic soil mechanics and I expect that you can play easily with the concepts and you can change them the way you want. So, as to deal with the concerns raised by these issues, very big issue, you know, line. So, what it indicates is that unless you change yourself, unless, unless you change the course of conduct which have been defined the books, you cannot go ahead. So, the situation is like this that we know that we are handicapped, we cannot apply the equations which have been given in 1940s, 1950s by our great researchers, all right. So, and why all this is being done? So, that we can get the best answer to the questions. So, in addition to this, the course focuses on pointing out the role and importance of the parameters and mechanisms that govern interaction of contaminants with geomaterials. So, interaction is going to be a key word, you know everywhere interaction. When I am talking to you, I said it is not teaching, it is interaction. When you talk to me, it is an interaction, it is not a question. So, interaction is something, you know, which most of the technologists talk about. How many types of interactions you have come across in geomechanics? Any idea? Yes. We only dealt with the three phase relationship and most of our interactions. Yeah, give it to him. Yes. Soil water interaction. Very good. One is soil water interaction. Number two. Yeah, give it to her. Soil structure interaction. Very nice. Soil structure interaction. Third one. Soil soil interaction. Correct. Fourth. Any guess? Create new interactions. So, 
So, most of the time you have talked about you know solids interacting with the liquids. In petroleum industry, it is solids, liquids and gases interacting with each other. So, there nobody is interested in doing hydraulic conductivity of a porous media. Why? They are more interested in let us say gas permeability of the porous media because they are producing gas. So, they want to know how much volume of the gas passes through the porous media in a certain amount of time. So, this becomes your gas solid interaction. The more complex situation would be you have fluid, you have gaseous form, crude oil coming out of a well and the whole mechanism is taking place in the porous system, clear. So, this becomes liquid solid gas interface, the interaction between all the three phases of the matter, is this fine? So, we are going to talk about you know how this interaction takes place, interaction between one entity and another entity, gases interacting with solids, solids interacting with water, gases interacting with water. So, until now you have talked about only poor water pressures, is it not very conveniently you remove the term poor gas pressure. Why? You saturated everything before testing, that is not the justice done with the material. Nowhere in nature we have saturated soils. If that was the situation, country would not have been crying for water, agreed? So, you have been studying a state of the material which is artificially created by you, oversimplified. Is this part clear? I can see a lot of heads nodding. Is this okay? So, the first premise that you are talking about the states of the materials which are hypothetical, utopian, they are not real. We will discuss this more and more, clear? So, the interaction of contaminant with the geomaterials and their degradation. In our conventional subject, we were always talking about the control volumes. We never bothered about the degradation. is correct. When you are doing seepage analysis, you took a control volume and the control volume never deforms, never distorts, never degrades, everything remains intact as if it is made up of steel. Even steel also degrades, but your porous media never degrades, all right, clear. The second thing is consolidation theory. Again, you talked about the control volumes and you said influx, outflux, I am balancing the two, the material remains as it is, of course it shrinks or swells depending upon the load conditions. But in real life it is not going to happen, in real life the material degrades, why? I just cited an example of organic systems. So, most of the soils might be having some organic content in them and this organic matter is going to degrade, is this fine? Another good example of this would be MSWs, municipal solid waste, where the whole idea is to let the material degrade. If it remains as it is, it is of no use, clear? So, all this degradation, either this could be natural or this could be in the presence of chemicals or radionuclides. So, radionuclides are coming out of a very specific situation which is when you are handling radioactive materials, ores, when you are processing them, all right, nuclear power stations, weaponries where you are making weapons. And I know in today's context, I hope all of you will agree that every nation would like to do this because every nation wants to become a powerful nation, G5, G9, G12 all those clubs are there. No? So, you want to join a club or not? G5. So, India is trying to become a club member of G5. I hope you understand the connotation of this. What is G5? What is G9? What is G12? And so on. Now, this type of situation may also occur when we are dealing with the temperatures because industrial waste comes out at elevated temperatures. So, how these temperatures are going to influence the whole system, 
the porous media, the geomaterials and so on. So, the scope is becoming quite big, I am sure you must be realizing, but more realistic. Is this okay? Are you convinced? Any questions? So, however, as contaminant geometrical interaction is an extremely slow and complex process, why? Because the permeabilities are extremely low of the porous system, which primarily depends upon their physical, chemical and mineralogical properties. It is quite difficult to study this interaction under laboratory or in situ conditions, because process is extremely slow. The fluid phase migration is extremely slow process. Hydraulic conductivity of clays are 10 power minus 11 meter per second. Even sands would be 10 power minus 6, 10 power minus 7 meter per second. When you talk about the rocks, 10 power minus 21 meter per second, but the interaction is occurring. So, a big challenge is whatever is happening in nature, how would you simulate it? How would you study this? How would you see what would be the detrimental effect of this interaction? So, this is becoming a challenging situation. In other words, whatever happens in nature, would it be possible for me to simulate in the realistic manner, either numerically or experimentally in the laboratory? Is this part okay? So, all these are going to be challenges. So, this calls for different types of modeling techniques. I do not know how many types of modeling techniques you have been exposed to. Uh, there is something known as you know accelerated physical modeling. I am sure you must be doing a course on this centrifuge modeling this semester. No, next semester you will be doing good. So, this is what is accelerated physical modeling, centrifuge modeling. You know we can use FEM, finite difference, numerical modeling, analytical analysis and so on. All right. So, these are mathematical models which you develop for the situations. Sometimes uh, the concept which has been ignored is that how physical, chemical and mineralogical properties might get changed when all these situations which we have discussed some time back uh, become pertinent. So, I was talking about you know temperatures and then I said the system might change its characteristics. I was talking about the type of contaminants which might be so aggressive that they may have a tendency to eat up the porous media, clear. That means, the all overall properties of the porous system are bound to change because of this interaction. Unfortunately, this type of discussion we have not done in conventional geomechanics, it is okay. So, this is what actually we will be doing more and more into here. So, the contents of this course were uh, mostly uh, developed by my students uh, activities, you know, in the form of my PhD students and the master's students. So, what I try to do is I try to share uh, what has been done by them in this context since several years. And uh, in the process we have developed the laboratory which you visited and uh, you have already physically seen this, but those of you who have not. Uh, you can visit uh, the website and you can go to this link. So, most of the time you will see uh, when I discuss in this course and this is what I have written uh, that most of the findings of my ex students I present over here, because this is how the course has got developed, you know. So, mostly this is the PhD thesis and master's thesis uh, which were thematic and those themes are becoming the modules to environmental geomechanics. This is what actually I wanted to emphasize, it is okay. And there was no way we could have ordered the instrument directly, two, three things. The instrument might not be available, the instrument might be very expensive, uh, which we cannot afford. And another thing is when students work on a thesis, you know, you should have easy access to the setup. You cannot wait for 2 years for the instrument to come, by that time the thesis would be over.